Hey folks, Mel the Train Shooter back in the studio and back with a build overview for you. Yes, it's come to that sort of time. We are finally wrapping up all the uh, Turf War Z uh, build videos, yeah, the zombie apocalypse board. And a quick shout out for Turf War Z, it's currently finishing on Kickstarter. I think it finishes next couple of days. But, yeah, I'll throw a link up and in the description and that sort of stuff. It's quite, it's done really well. I'm really chuffed with Dean. Really chuffed for Dean, should I say. Yeah. Because, uh, I mean, it's, it's coming close to 20,000, I think. Last time I checked, it was around about 16 and a half. Yeah, so I'm really quite chuffed about that. And a little bit of history, yeah. This isn't Dean's first Kickstarter, yeah. I built the Immortals board, yeah. And that was for his fantasy game, but I didn't make it on Kickstarter, it didn't fund. And this was very much, this, this Turf War Z project was very much a, you know, last throw of the dice for him. And it has smashed it, yeah. So, a little quick shout out for him, yeah. If you are interested in zombies and you're interested in LA gangs, and check out the icons. Yeah, the icons are really, there's a couple of them that I want to be truthful, yeah. A big, there's one that looks right out of Big Trouble in Little China, I just love that film. Yeah, but anyway, check them out. But anyway, we've gone through how I built the board for it and all that sort of stuff, and I've gone taking you through the techniques and the tutorials. Yeah, there's still a, probably a few little things I'd like to show you in the future, but I think you're all zombie apocalypse out. You know, I've noticed across the, you know, we've had a good month of it. This will wrap it up quite nicely, and then we'll get back into some trenches and all sorts of, like, other war gamey stuff. You know what I mean? I've got, I've got a few more projects going, but this is the sort of time where I, you know, the project's gone, it's disappeared. I've had enough time now to actually say, oh, actually, yeah, it, was, it was quite good, I quite liked it. Yeah, I always start these projects, and I'll be honest with you, whenever I do any work, yeah, I'm never happy with it. Never. Ever. <laughs> I, 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 it's the curse of the terrain builder, to be truthful. Yeah, the, the problem is that we know where all the errors are. Secondly, we judge the pieces with our own eyes. Yeah, so we see stuff that the majority of people don't even see. Do you know what I mean? They don't even know it's a problem. They actually probably think it's quite, something quite good, and you're like, no, that's what I screwed up. <laughs> you know? And so I go through, I, I found that I go through this process of the board goes, and the only thing that's, that's going through my mind is one, Please get there safely. Please get there safely. Please get there safely. And then secondly, yeah, you know, please like it. Please like it. And, you know, overall the response has been really good. The response has been really good from Dean, yeah, and Stuart. Dean uh, runs uh, Broken Spirit Games, who writes the rules and that sort of stuff. Then Stuart, Stuart, they sort of teamed up on this Kickstarter, on this project, and Stuart's the miniature sculpting and the terrain accessories and that sort of stuff. Also, you should check out the Kickstarter because I forgot to mention this before. Yeah, Stuart put a load of terrain accessories and bits and that sort of stuff, stuff that weren't on the build, on as like extra add-ons and they're dirt cheap. Yeah, so just as a heads up, I'd take a nose if you're looking for urban scatter and that sort of stuff. But anyway, they, they sort of teamed up together and like, I got good vibes back from them. Then they took it to Falkirk, yeah, which was a gaming show. And the vibes back from that was, it was really good. And then obviously the vibes back from you guys was, it was really good with caveats as always, because this is the internet. Okay, now I'm going to talk through each individual section, but yeah, overall, I'm quite pleased. There's areas that I want to spend more time on. There's areas which I wish I'd spent more time on and I hadn't shortcutted. Uh, there's techniques I need to improve myself. You know, I think what I put out was perfectly valid for, you know, the commission I had to do. Yeah, but I'm rocking things here. I can do better. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So let's talk about the project. Okay, then. Quick sup. Now, when Dean came to me, he gave me a simple brief. And when Dean came to me, it was a long time ago. This, this has been one of those legacy projects, you know, ones I've had to catch up, get done. And when they announced the Kickstarter date, you know, I really had to get catched up and get done. <sighs> Thanks, Jace. <sighs> it's always the same. 
I've got another commission coming up soon for foreground and I am giving myself plenty of time for that one. But anyway, that's in the future. We'll talk about now. Yeah, so Dean came along, he said, right, what I want is I want a four foot by four foot modular board, yeah, of an urban street setting, overgrown zombie apocalypse, yeah. Uh, and he wanted it in, done in such a way that, you know, it could be rearranged to give him the maximum amount of sort of variation, okay? And this was because it was going to be a board that was going to be used as a backdrop for photo photographs for in the rule book and to show off the minis and that sort of stuff. And that's an important point, yeah? But also it was going to be a demo board to take the, take the actual game round the shows yeah, so they wanted to be able to vary it up a bit, okay? And and so we were given, right, we're looking at downtown LA, yeah, so nice and hot. We're looking at American street buildings. And I, I must admit, at the time when I was looking for the buildings, which was, I mean, we're talking about when I was back at home, yeah, working on the kitchen table, yeah? When I was looking for the buildings, uh, all I could really find at the time was Sarissa Precision, okay, and they did the city block range. Now, ever since then, I've seen a few different ranges that you know, ranges have developed and that sort of stuff. And there's more possible buildings that would have suited it more. But even so, I'm still quite like the Sarissa Precision ones, the city blocks. They're quite nice, okay. So, reached out to Sarissa. Thank you, Sarissa. They they were good enough to sort of like you know send a load of buildings across and that sort of stuff. And we ended up with eight buildings. And then when we looked out, we reckoned, okay, we're gonna do about six of them because I need a trial piece, I need a test piece and that sort of stuff. And then I could do with the final one for like, you know, for doing the, the videos and that sort of stuff. That one there. Yeah, so got the buildings in, we got, we got the board sorted. And then we, the, the third element of the build was this resis, resin scatter scenery from Studio Miniatures. And that was coming from Stuart. So it was just a simple, simple paint job. Now the brief on it was keep it simple, okay? One, I'll be perfectly honest, I don't really go into money in, in, on these sort of channels, but work-wise, wage-wise and pay-wise, let's say a week's work, okay? A reasonable week's work. Yeah, not more than that. Actual work-wise, a phenomenal amount of work. But it's always the way. I, I'm, I'm, I'm rubbish at quoting for commissions. I'm absolutely crap at it. Yeah. And having spoken to a few other people, and people like, I mean, I'll be honest with you. I remember sitting with Dave Marshall, and he was telling me about his first commission, the, the four. And he said, someone gave me 10 grand just off the bat. And I was like, pardon? What? <laughs> I've never got even a fraction close to charging that for a commission. So I know I'm crap at charging for commissions. And I should probably charge more. Yeah, but like I say, I'm, I'm, I'm a pretty crap at it. Yeah, but because uh, it was supposed to, it, it really was supposed to be a short project that went on. Yeah, it was supposed to be a simple build, but it went on because of my errors. Right, let, let, let's, let's section it down. Let's talk about the, because I'm rambling. Yeah. Look, at the end of the day, this is gonna be a rambly video. Okay, there's no doubt about that. Yeah. Uh, brief wise, okay, we've got a four by four modular board that I had to do, yeah, urban setting. I needed urban buildings, so we reached out to Sarissa. We got the, the studios, the, the resin pieces from Studio Miniatures. And then, what shall the brief was, Keep the colour scenes, schemes simple. Lot, lots of graffiti, lots of burnt out, bored up, that sort of stuff, you know, warnings of zombies. Yeah, I decided to inject a little bit of comedy in there. You know, there is a dick. If you look at the pictures close enough, yeah, there's a graffiti dick on one of the buildings and there's all sorts of things. And if you look at the buildings close enough in the graffiti, yeah, you can actually make out yeah, quite a few of you used in initials and stuff like that. So a lot of the regulars from the live chats, you'll find yourself graffitied on the... I didn't know what to write, so I was just picking names. Yeah, Westy and Tim Swede. Love forever. 
I didn't even realise what I was doing when I was doing that one. You see, now I'm talking about the buildings, aren't I? So anyway, needed to keep it simple. Now, I had a certain challenge with this, this project, which was graffiti up. That was one of the key things. Keep the buildings simple, but they wanted lots of graffiti. Well, Dean wanted lots of graffiti and that sort of stuff. And I knew graffiti meant airbrushing. And I knew that my airbrushing skills were not up to doing graffiti, okay? Which meant I had two choices. I could either sit back with a load of sheets and a load of bits and try and put an hour or two, maybe eight hours, you know what I mean, into practicing airbrushing and getting it right. And that works, you know, that does work. But I find that I learn better on the job, so to speak, yeah? Actually having to do it. And so what I did is I tasked myself, yeah, with other than aerosols and a little bit of brushing, yeah, to do pretty much all the work with an airbrush, okay? Stupid pose. The amount of mistakes I made, the amount of going over, the amount of splurges, yeah, but it paid off. Now, it turned a one week commission probably into, if I'm realistic work wise, four weeks work. Yeah, yeah. Now, this wasn't helped by my stupidity in putting the buildings together first. See, part of the brief was, yeah, that you didn't need the insides of the buildings. Yeah, there's no gameplay on the insides of buildings. It all takes place on the outsides and on the roofs and that sort of stuff. Yeah, so we had to, what you call it? So I had to build the buildings. And what I should have done is I should have painted all, all the sort of panels, all of these panels, because they're built up of separate panels, separately, yeah? And brought them all together, because that means I would have had nice, neat paint edges and there'd been not, no going over. Instead, yeah, I built the buildings solid, yeah? And then decided to paint them with an airbrush. Now it was, it was challenging to say the least, to say the least, yeah. But on the plus side, I've come out of it the other side being able to airbrush. And I mean that confidently. I mean, I can, I can instinctually troubleshoot when things aren't working right. And nine times out of 10, apply what I know is the fix to that problem and fix it, okay? Uh, airflow, blockages, paint drying up, paint thickening, you know, all these sort of things. Understanding the differences between the actual paints. Black's a much different beast than all the other colours. Yeah, you got get a lot more dry tip with black, you have noticed. So you need to thin it down a little bit more. And then lots of little things like that, that you, you, you only pick up by simply doing it and doing it and working through the problems until when the problem occurs, yeah, you already know where it is, you know? There's no conscious thought. And I've got to that stage now, I'm quite happy airbrushing. I can pick up an airbrush, you know, hammer that with no worries whatsoever, and produce quite good results. So, yes, the project did run over, you know, uh, but on the plus side, I pulled it off on the airbrushing. So I'm, I'm grateful for that. One thing that I really didn't enjoy was the fact how long it kept me from the channel. Okay, because of the deadline, because it had to be kept secret, yeah? I don't like that, I don't like keeping projects secret, yeah? I'm the terrain tutor, channel first from now on, so if the project has to be kept secret, I'm not gonna do it, it's as simple as that, yeah? Because this is what I enjoy. This is what puts a smile on both school's face, you know what I mean? Yeah, so, there we are with that. And yeah, I've learned to airbrush. Now, it did mean that we went horrifically over on the project, yeah, and it was very frustrating and, and painful at times for me, yeah. I mean, you guys know the old noggin and all that sort of stuff, so I don't handle those sort of things, and I, I get very depressed when I'm away from you people, <laughs> you know. I don't know, Pratt. Perhaps my ego is so so fragile. I need your your continual comments of saying I can't actually good at something. I don't know, but I feel like I'm letting you down. Yeah, but 
I also knew at the same time I had to get it done, I had to master airbrushing, I couldn't go back to just painting, yeah, because the problem was if I'd gone back to painting and not mastered the airbrushing, then when I got to the graffiti, I'd screw it all up, you know what I mean, and then I'd just be going back with, you, you, see where I'm going with this? Yeah, you know where I'm going with this. And so that was the real challenge of this project. The actual terrain itself, yeah, wasn't a challenge. There wasn't any real part of it, okay? So let, let's walk, walk through the actual project section by section. The boards, okay? Uh, what should we call it? Uh, four two by two, 23 and a half by 23 and a half, yeah, boards. Simple engraving with foam board laid down for the raised sidewalk area, touching up that sort of stuff. We did the engraving, we did the detailing. We should have done the stippling and the ground effect a little bit better. Yeah, there was a, there was a slight, I have one of those situations where I've done three boards, there wasn't just enough paint left for the final stippling of the, of the fourth board, because I'd been mixing it up. Yeah, slowly highlighting the grey up in, in, in a mixing palette. Yeah, to do my stippling and to, to, to break the variation up. And there wasn't enough for the fourth board, which meant I had to mix fret, mix fresh, mix fresh. <laughs> yeah, and with doing that, yeah, I had to then watch it. With applying that, it, I sort of threw one of the boards off, and I managed to pull it back again, but a little bit disappointed with that. Quite chuffed with the watch it with the uh, the roads made out of a uh, belt sander roll. Obviously there's the tutorial, yeah, uh, linky in the description for the tutorial if you want to see exactly how I did that. I was quite chuffed with how that came out, but I'll be honest with you guys, I wish I'd done more on the roads, to be perfectly honest. And a lo load of people you threw on a load of techniques about cracking and that sort of stuff. I've done that sort of stuff in the past, but it was this time issue. It was, you know, how much time do I want to spend on this project? Knowing that I've also got the buildings and the residence scatter scenery to do and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. So what I'm thinking is, I think personally, from my point of view, I need to improve my roads technique, okay? Also with the, what you call it? With the road layouts. Now, someone pointed out that they said, that looks nothing like any road layouts I ever know, I've ever seen, yeah. Uh, now that confused me because I, I did a Google search and I got the road layout pretty much from LA Street View, yeah, on Google. So I thought it was like, that's, that's what they look like in LA. So, <laughs> Dibs, never been to LA. Sorry about that one, guys. Yeah, but the actual technique, Need a bit of work on that, I think. I, I, I was rushing quite a bit. I didn't let the paint fully cure, and so I, you know, I had problems with lifting the masking tape up, and you know, and that raised, and I had a few problems with overspraying and stuff like that. Could have done it better, to be perfectly honest, and need more practice. Yeah, the cracks and all those sort of things on the roads, I just didn't do. Yeah, also a lot of the actual sort of debris. Yeah, my plan was I was going to put bits of newspaper down and that sort of stuff. Look, APS turned around and said I should have put dog turds down. <laughs> I really should have. Yeah. And there was a loads I wanted to do Coke cans, but it was just down to the time. So I got quite annoyed about that. Yeah, so I think we are going to see maybe one or two videos. Maybe, get, let's give it a month or two. Yeah, because like I say, I've got this foreground build to do. Then, and I also think you guys have had a bit enough of urban. And I'm going to take a little break, yeah? And in the, in the background, I'm just going to potter on, yeah? And improve my roads technique and bring you something better. Now, I will ha hold my hands up, okay? Uh, the, the scatter, yeah? Not so much on the actual pavements and that sort of stuff. That was in the cracks and that, that worked pretty well, to be perfectly honest, yeah? But on the roads... Yeah, in hindsight, I wasn't happy with it. Yeah, it was rushed. It was dabbed. It, it was almost uniform, you know. It, did, it wasn't good, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, I think the problem was quite simple. Yeah, it had to be applied that hour. Yeah, for that board to be sealed the next day. Yeah, it just had to. Yeah, and I think because it was the final job, yeah, creativity-wise, obviously I had to seal it, yeah, but 
creativity wise it was the final job at the end of a 13 hour day yeah I should have, have gone and spent you know taken at least 10-15 minutes with a brewer just perhaps gone and researched it a bit better yeah instead of just going off gut feeling yeah so apologies for that apologies to Dean apologies to you guys for that I'm not happy with that to be perfectly honest to I, I think when it went out the door I wasn't happy with it but I think at the same time it's just one of those situations where I'm just gonna have to accept it guys do you know what I mean what can you do it's already down fixing it would involve a lot of work yeah and there wasn't the time for it so I can do better, yeah? I have done better in the past, to be perfectly honest. Yeah? In the long past, before I spent so much, before the terrain tutor. So, yeah. Let's have a little break from the urban stuff. And we'll come back, yeah? And there's a couple of things I want to do, yeah? Urban wise. It's very much. You look back and it, I don't want this to be one of those situations where, oh, I wanted to show you this, I wanted to show you this, I wanted to show you this. And then it gets drifted away. So, listen guys, yeah, after I've done the foreground board, remind me. Yeah, just, Bosicle, you owe some more urban boards, you know what I mean? Just give me a gentle reminder just in case, you know, life gets on top and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, so... With regards to the road, that was the letdown. Other than that, I was really happy with them. I love the layout, yeah, the, the corners worked well because they let they gave us those sort of three configurations. Which gave us a load of different gameplay to be truthful. I was really chuffed with that. Yeah. Uh, I like to say, other than the flocking, and perhaps a little bit on the stippling in the detail, I could have got my washes and detailing in between the watch clock that the slab's a bit neater. Yeah, to be perfectly honest. Could he, I should have used a pen to be truthful rather than watch well brush. But hey ho, I can live with that, you know what I mean? Yeah, so that's the boards. And overall, boards pretty happy with. Yeah. Moving on to the buildings. Right, as I said. Mel was a stupid boy. What Mel should have done is got the individual panels, yeah, and sprayed them all, and then assembled them. A little bit of touch up, beautiful. No, Mel didn't do that. Mel was the genius who put all the buildings together, yeah, and then decided to spray them. Which meant I had to prime them, the majority of them, what you call it, uh, fur grey. Army painter. Yeah, and that meant all these bits, yeah, had to be detailed. And then I had to go in and do the window frames. Then I had to go in underneath the planks that I'd added, yeah, to do the black bit. Oh, stupid boats. If you ever have, yeah, I'm going to have to be careful with that, honour. <laughs> yeah, if you ever have one of these buildings, yeah, don't do what I did. Separate it into panels. Now, with regards to the actual weathering and the tech like, techniques like that, one of the briefs was he wanted it to be light. Now, I didn't want to go light on all of it, so I picked a couple of buildings, and what I decided was residential will go for brick. Yeah, brownstone, I think they call it. I don't think that is actually brownstone. That's terracotta, obviously, but they call it brownstone. And the commercial buildings... I decided I'll go bright with those because they seem to have a lot of bright buildings in LA. Yeah, and then with the factory, I went with a really light cream. Yeah, highlighted up with white actually. And the colours really worked. It was a good contrast. Okay, but if you're going to do anything like this, you know, don't do what I did, guys. Yeah, if you've got buildings and you don't have to worry about the interiors and you can spray paint the panels and put them together, yeah, yeah. Now this is another one of those videos I want to bring you in the future, okay? Because I, I did. There's a video on how professional production qualities here. Yeah, there's a video on how I did all of it. Okay, link down in the description and all that sort of stuff, but. I only sort of covered the basic techniques, 
yeah, and the techniques that I sort of used. Now, I want to do, show you a few different things, do you know what I mean, that you can do. Yeah, so much like with the roads, I, th I think what we'll do is we'll, we'll be having another video in the future, yeah, come summer. Uh, it might not be full buildings, what I might do is get a couple of panels and use them to show, sort of demonstrate different techniques and stuff like that. Yeah, so we're not done with this either. Yeah, so that'll be coming in the future. But with regards to the actual Turf War Z project, the real challenge with the buildings, like I say, was forcing myself to learn how to airbrush because, yeah, when I did this one, once I'd learned how to airbrush, it wasn't a problem. While you're learning to airbrush and you're going off and you're splattering and then you're going to have to come back in. And remember, I wasn't correcting my mistakes and touching up with a brush. I was correcting things with an airbrush, which also meant as I was correcting things, yeah, I was making mistakes. I mean, on, on, on the Turf War Z buildings, there were, I think on one of the buildings, I did the grey and, and the watch colour and the terracotta about five times on one wall. Gone over, correct that, or gone back over on that bit, correct that, gone, you know, my. It's what I had to do, okay? But painful wasn't the word. I mean, with regards to the actual painting styles and techniques, on the build, like I said, I, keep, I kept it simple. And I kept it simple across the whole thing. Now, when, when, you, when you're doing what you call it, terrain for things like rule books and stuff like that, your instinct, your instinct is to do the most detailed, amazing terrain possible, okay? And that's actually wrong, yeah? First off, the first thing you've got to realise is, no matter how proud you are that you are doing terrain for a rule book, understand your terrain is there as a backdrop for the minis. And that means when they're taking the photos, they're going to be focused on the minis. Which means all your super, super, super detail, yeah, gets blurred out. Now you get this situation where it's very much like wargaming models, okay? It's two styles of painting. You can paint, yeah, for what we call tabletop, i.e. You put it on the tabletop, you're standing up, you look down, it looks good, okay? And that's because you use simple, bold techniques that are clear to see from a distance without focusing on them, yeah, to create the image. Now that works really well at a distance, okay? Now the other option is very much like the heavy metal painting, you know, the, the, the competition painting, where you're painting to paint a model that you're looking at up close here, so everything's blended, there's lots of fine detail, and all that is simply lost at that distance. Yeah? Now when you do stuff for a rule book, which was that was my primary concern, okay? When it comes to what you call it, when it comes to demo tables, yeah, having a really detailed demo table is great, but generally it's being viewed in a convention centre with absolutely crap light. So even your super detailing gets lost and your colours get lost. I mean you know Derby Worlds, where they used to have it, they've moved now this year. Yeah. But where they used to have it, it used to have like this green lighting. Seriously, the lighting was like a yellowy green, yeah, and it would change the colour of your terrain, yeah. So I wasn't really concerned about the demo side of it, yeah. There's no control over how my models will, how my buildings will look over that. But in the magazine, yeah, in the rule books and in, in like you know adverts and stuff like that, which it'd be used for, yeah, as a backdrop, I needed to adopt, yeah, the tabletop approach, yeah, because when you're focused on the minis and it's in the backdrop. The tabletop approach, because it used stark colours and simple colours, yeah, and striking effects, produces the best results, yeah, without detracting from the miniatures. Okay, so pretty much everything was like base coat, highlight, wash, and it was very much like that across the board. Yeah, in some cases it was just base coat and wash. Well, actually no, in the railings we put a bit of orange on and then washed them. It was a lot of it was simply about getting the right base colours, yeah, a little bit of highlight to get the contrast and then let the wash do the work. You know what I mean? 
It was a relatively simple process, to be perfectly honest, and it produced good results. I mean, we had umber washes all over it, yeah? Now, I do need to give a massive shout-out now, yeah, to Kai the Robot Guy, okay? Now, Kai the Robot Guy, he did us an absolute blinder because part of the project was Dean wanted some way of accessing the roofs, and the Sarissa Precision Buildings didn't come with ladders or anything like that yeah so I, I reached out to Kai who's got a laser cutter and he's an engineer and designed stuff on CAD yeah and over a matter of like two days we designed some watch call it some uh, uh, fire escapes yeah to fit it and he made he, he laser cut and we put them together we whacked them on they look brilliant So massive shout out to Kai on that one and I'm looking forward to actually working with Kai and, and having to play with a few different things, you know what I mean? Yeah, but that's, that's something completely separate. No, I'm not getting into making loads of MBF terrain before we start going on about it. I'm not. Alright? Uh, so. so yeah, the buildings overall were pretty simple. The, the watch call it, the... The brick one's really easy, yeah. I was really chuffed with the smoke effect. Obviously, yeah, Dean said, we, I want it boarded up, I want it burnt out, that sort of stuff. Yeah, no interiors. And so, the smoke effects, I actually did a lot of time researching smoke effects. Yeah, good couple of brews. I think I spent about an hour looking at burnt out buildings and that sort of stuff. And I've got to say, yeah, I was doing it with the airbrush, and I'll be honest with you, the stuff I did on the Turf War Z buildings probably looks better, smoke damage wise, than the stuff that I did on this. You know, on the back of this. Yeah? But, oh, the, the real thing that made me really happy was, there was a comment, yeah? And it was a comment from a firefighter. And he just tur he turned around and I, I can't remember his name. I can't remember what he said, but basically he just turned around and said, you know, you know, I'm a firefighter. Your smoke's bang on, yeah. And that was like, that's nice, yeah. Now the other one, yeah, the other thing that was really nice about the project, and it was actually before it got unveiled, yeah. Uh, and I'd done the graffiti, yeah, and it was the first bit of graffiti I've ever ever done with an airbrush. Okay, and so I was quite, I was quite proud of myself, and I'd gone down to see Dan, yeah, who's like the studio manager. He, he, he's an artist. He's a photographer, yeah, but he's also a graffiti artist. Yeah, and Dan's a lovely, lovely, lovely guy. Yeah, but he's also the studio manager here at the Akava Studios, the communal studios I'm based in. Okay, and I went down, and I got, I got my phone. And I'd gone down and I sort of I gone down to show my, my Turf War Z yeah uh, graffiti. And I went and, and I I got the photo, yeah, and I took it down to him and I went, E R, I've got something you might find interested. What do you think of that? And he sort of looked at it, yeah. And you know when people look at something when they don't reckon it's much cop, okay? And he turned around and he didn't say it wasn't much cop, but he looked at it. And, you know, remember this, he's a, a professional graffiti artist, you know. He, companies pay him to do murals and he does work with kids and all. You know, he's a fantastic artist. Yeah, and graffiti is his, his medium as well as photography. Yeah. And, and so obviously, you know, my Turf War Z stuff is you know, pretty basic when it comes to graffiti. Yeah, so I turned around and I went, and I showed it, you know, I showed him the photo of the side of the building, and, 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 it, and you know, I, I instantly recognised the look on his face of, he wasn't impressed. You know, he wasn't going to say it, but, you know, I recognised that look. And then he said, where's that? He thought the building was a real building. <laughs> yeah, the biggest, cheesiest grin came over my face you can ever imagine. As I turned around and went, sort of scale the picture back. Yeah, on my phone, you know, as you do. And sort of the, my studio appeared in the background, yeah? And there was this little miniature building with the graffiti on, on my table. And I went, in my studio, mate. 
yeah? And this big grin came over his face of the realisation was, oh, that's not graffiti, so Mel's seen it, you know, as he's been wandering around. That's, Mel's done that, and then swollen, and, and the fact that he thought my building was a real building with real graffiti on, you know what I mean? Oh, I almost gave the bloke a hug. Yeah, so I was really chuffed over that. Now, just to wrap the buildings up. So obviously, talked a lot about the brown ones and, and, the, and what you call it, and the smoke effects and all that sort of stuff. And we talked about the tutorials downstairs. Down, downstairs, in the description downstairs. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna stick in it. Yeah, obviously we did the yellow buildings, yeah. The yellow buildings were in for a penny, in for a pound. I didn't know they were going to work until they were. it was all done and everything was laid down. And it was at that point that I went, yeah, that looks nice. Yeah, Spray, spraying buildings. I mean, you got to understand, yeah, there's one thing doing red brick. But when you're spraying a building, that sort of yellow, you know what I mean? You're going to have problems, you know, you're going to have concerns yeah but they panned out and the fact that I did them with the commercial ones and then I used corrugated cardboard and bits of plastic card to do the shutters worked a treat really paid out well and as a visual contrast yeah give it a go there's one thing about having these grey boards yeah but having a board which has that that sort of colour now I'll be honest with you I'm not sure how that's going to pan out with regards to a backdrop for miniatures because it is quite bright, it is quite distracting. In the far background, I think it'll work. Yeah, in a close background, I'm not sure, unless they're using it as a visual contrast to quite dark characters. So people dressed in a lot in black and that sort of stuff, that might work. Yeah, I don't know, so I'm looking forward to seeing the photos. Yeah, but that was very much one of those, right, I need to do it yellow. This is the yellow, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it yellow. I've done it yellow. Oh God, I've done it yellow. Okay. Stick with it. Stick with it. Stick with it. Stick with it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it turned out all right, didn't it? <laughs> it really was like that. Yeah. Now, the other, the, 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 um, the, that was the main thing about the, the yellow builds. Okay, now the final thing was the, the big factory. Factory was quite interesting because it didn't come with a base unlike all the rest, okay? Uh, and so that, that posed a different set of challenges with regards to weathering. And the reason being is with these, with them having a base, yeah, I could weather down the walls and out a little, okay? But with the factory, yeah, it would sit straight on top of my concrete boards. Yeah, which meant I could weather down the building which would be dark and then it would go to quite a clear floor because it would be sitting straight on top of the board instead of going onto a weathered base. So with that one I had to sort of really slim down the weathering, yeah, so there wasn't a harsh contrast line. Yeah, I did do a little bit of stippling and broke it up in different ways. Yeah, we did the smoke effects, doing the roof and the windows. I really should have done the panel method, you know, spraying the individual panels then put it together. I so should have done the panel. I think it took me about three days. Three, three long days. Even the chimneys, they have like these sort of vents. Trying to airbrush around them. And, oh. If you can put them together, buy panels first. Even if it's just the bulk of your work. And so, you know, and paint them before you say, do it, just do it, yeah? But, moving on from the factory, I did like it, yeah? It did turn out well. I wish I'd reinforced the back of the cardboard doors a bit more, yeah? I'd done all the windows, I'd assumed that the doors would be fine. I had a little bit of struggle with those because they were, the doors are laser etched on a thin bit of cardboard. Well, not massively thin, but it's cardboard. And because the la laser laser etched, it's especially thinner. And I had a little bit of issues with doors, you know, coming open and me having to glue them back down and that again. 
you know, which posed some problems, but you know, I fixed them. Above all, my advice to you, like I say, is look ahead, you know, do your panels and also research. But above all, yeah, I'm at the buildings I did, I'm really chuff with them. You know, for the simple techniques, like I say, you know, they are just simple painting techniques and a combination of a lot of simple techniques, yeah, really brings it out. The, the, watch, the ground foliage, really nice. I wish I'd done bin bags and some and more debris and that sort of stuff. But like I say, that's an, another one of those, we'll do it in the future sort of things. But overall, with the buildings, yeah, I'm quite happy with those. You know what I mean? Yes, I could have done them better. But then again, I, I can normally do everything better. You know, terrain is time. That's all it is. You can learn the techniques, guys. There's nothing that any terrain artist does that you can't learn how to do. And with practice, do it. Okay? It's just the time. Okay? But with the time allotted, yeah, I'm quite happy with the building. So, you know, a, little, a couple of little things here and there, you know, that I could have done better. Like I say, the irony is, whereas with the, with the urban boards... My mistakes, my big mistake, which was the the flocking on the on the foliage on the road, yeah, was clear to see, yeah. My big mistake with the buildings was my side. You didn't get to see that. You know what I mean. You're only hearing about it, and I'm assuming, by the way, you're hearing me going on about it. Yeah, you'd appreciate that. Yeah, it must have been a hell of a bit of a problem. And it was. Mm. So that, that's the buildings done. Let's move on to the scatter terrain, yeah, which was the final one. Now this was a collection of pieces from Studio Miniatures from Stuart. Yeah. Uh, all sorts of different eclectic arrangements of, of junk and bins and barrels and barriers and cones. Now uh, to be perfectly honest, I've got to hold my hand up here and say, well, to be truthful, I did a bit of touching up and that sort of stuff and a few little bits. Yeah, but the bulk of the work was done by our good old Jay Screen. Yeah, who came into the studio to help me on the final days. And it was one of those jobs. Jay used to be a commission painter. So, you know, with it being little resin bits, he was just my man to just go on, get details on. And once again, yeah, we did go down that simple technique, base coat, little bit of highlighting, working with washes, bit of detailing, and he did a cracking job, yeah? Now, once again, the scatter terrain was done with the intention of, yeah, simple colours, nice and bold highlights, okay? Use the washing to give it depth and detail, so we're looking at that long distance view again. I didn't want the scatter terrain to compete with the models, yeah, in the in the rule books, yeah. So we were going for that distance thing again, yeah. Now normally I'd be quite paranoid about letting someone take over such a major element of a terrain build I'm doing, yeah. But because the painting requirements actually were quite low on those, there were no building requirements because they were precast, and I just know Jace is a, could paint them up to a much higher standard. It was me holding him back. Yeah, I was actually quite comfortable with just, yeah, go for it. I mean, he came up with ideas for, for what you call it. Uh, on the petrol, you could get, you could get undeaded. <laughs> it wasn't unleaded. Someone had added D to it and it was undeaded. And he came up with, what was it? Z juice and puke cola in the vending machines. Which, uh, puke cola is something he does from his old role-playing games. Whenever there's a drink, it's always puke cola. Yeah, so he threw that on, and I thought, yeah, give him creds for that, you know, let him go for that. And then it turned out quite now, nice. So, with regards to discussing the, the, the scatting, scatter terrain, I don't really feel justified in, in discussing it. First off, I didn't make it. Second off, I didn't really paint it. And, you know, my plans to scratch build a load of additional stuff didn't come together because I'd run out of time. So, 
what can you say? That's probably the shortest of the sections. Now they did turn out really nice, in all honesty. Yeah, Jay's did a cracking job. I did go in on a couple of pieces and just give them another wash. Yeah, just to darken them up, yeah, but that's nothing, no, that's nothing on, on Jace. Jace did a, a cracking job, and then when I came in the next day, he wasn't in, I looked at him, and you know when you look at something, uh, I could do with a bit more shadow on, yeah, it's one of those things that you can only see when the wash is dry, yeah, and in, 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 in with fresh eyes in daylight, so no dissing on, on Jace at all for that, yeah, I wasn't correcting his work, it was just, oh yeah, they need a bit more, yeah, and so I did that. So I did a little bit of I did a bit more of a little bit. I did a few bits, I think. I think I did anyway. I'm sure I did. <laughs> yeah, but they turned out quite now. Nice. Yeah. So the whole project, bringing it all together, it looked brilliant. It really did. I think it, it, because it was built in time for the deadline, I didn't go over the deadline. Yeah. It looked good. There were errors. I knew there were errors. Yeah. And like I say, I, you know, there was that doubt. But even I, at that time, knew that I quite liked the board. I really quite liked the board. It was quite nice because it was an evening. Yeah. And I got it pretty much all set out on here because I was doing the photographs. And there, were, there was quite a few of the watch work artists from the studios in, you know, and I sort of said, look, you know, because they've heard about this zombie board I'm doing, and they'd heard about the zombie board and that sort of stuff, and me sort of saying, now I can't share photos and that sort of stuff, and, and I sort of let, let the ones I know that, look, it's coming up, if you want to come see it, you can come see it because it's going you know, in the next day or two, so it'll be gone, if you want to see, you know, because we do that here, you know, if someone's produced work and that sort of stuff, they'll invite people to come and have a look at it, yeah, and they were all bowled, bowled over by it, it's quite nice because it was the first terrain board I've produced in Spode, now I've been in Spode for quite a while and we've done a load of terrain and a load of let's makes and a load of tutorials and stuff like that in here, yeah, uh, and they've never seen me make a terrain board, do you know what I mean? It's always been the simple stuff. And my let's makes and my tutorials are the simple stuff, yeah? A lot simpler than my terrain makes, and I go on about this being simpler, yeah? But they actually saw, and it was like, seeing their reaction to it, you know, with, with, it was really nice. Sending it off to Dean and Stuart, and you know, the Stuart's in the process of moving a house, and so he received it, but he, he didn't unpack it for donkey's ages, and I didn't know this, so I thought he didn't like it. <sighs> and I heard on the guy, I heard from Dean that yeah, he loves it and that sort of stuff, it's all fine, and then Stuart did his photography stuff for the Kickstarter and for, for the rule book and for the models and that sort of stuff, and then he got sh uh, shipped down to Dean so Dean could go and do the what you call it, do the demoing down at Falkirk, and he loved it. Yeah, and you know, obviously you guys have liked it. You know, with caveats, obviously. You know, we're, we're honest on this channel. Yeah, uh, and the people at Falkirk and that sort of stuff liked it, and so overall, really chuffed with it. Yeah, like I said. There's things I want to do, and if I'm perfectly honest, I think right now I'm looking at three separate videos. I want to do road effects, okay, and look at doing different road effects and showing you how to do those. And I want to experiment and up my game with those as well, yeah. I want to do buildings and look at buildings a bit more for you, and a few different painting techniques and that sort of stuff. Yeah, specifically urban, overgrown sort of buildings. And then I want to do a video on street scatter. You know, now, this is simple stuff and there's videos already about, but I just want to do mine to just round it off. And we're talking the bin bags made out of bin bag and a bit of putty on the inside. You know, the pallets, the cardboard boxes, the simple street scatter sort of stuff. Now, there's already plenty of tutorials out there. Everyone pretty much knows how to do them, or pretty much everyone knows how to do them, but I just like to round it off, you know just as the final thing. So I think we've probably got three more videos to come, yeah, but that will be after the foreground project. So remind me after we've done the foreground project. And we'll get stuck into those. And I think we've had a we've had a good amount of urban stuff now. You've got enough to be running with, 
you know, if, if you're looking to do urban boards. And, you know, if you're happy to wait a couple more months while I get this foreground project done, then we'll have a bit more for you. Probably August we're looking at it, and we'll do a few more videos in August and just, just cap the, the modern urban apocalypse off. There's lots of other areas that I want to go into, to be perfectly honest, and I don't want to get too weighed down, but at the same time, I don't want it to become one of those things that I really should have done that ages ago, and then not have the motivation or move so far on that we've got lots of other stuff to do. So there will be more urban stuff coming, guys. But overall, I think that wraps this overview up. Yeah, I made mistakes, I made good terrain, I've learned things, hopefully you guys have learned things, that's the important thing, yeah. I've learned above all, I am not keeping projects from you in the future, yeah, it doesn't work well for sharing the information, it doesn't work well for me. I actually discovered, I, I, I work well with your feedback, it improves me as a terrain artist, yeah. And so, I, I can't work in the dark anymore, I don't think. Yeah, so that's a big thing I've learned personally. Yeah, hopefully you guys have learned lots. Now, let's wrap this up. Obviously, if you are interested in the urban stuff, if you're interested in zombie games and one of zombie gangs and all that sort of stuff, yeah, go check out Dean's Kickstarter. Okay, link up there and link in the description. Yeah, if you are interested in finding some scattered terrain and that sort of stuff as well, yeah, go and have a look. There's some interesting add-ons that you might be interested in. Uh, right, moving on. Obviously, yeah, this video, like it, you know, comment, share. You know, anything you'd like to add, any insights, all that sort of stuff, get it in the comments, guys. Uh, and all, as always, yeah, the, the final appeal to you good folks, you know. All of this and me sharing this information and me being able to take so long making videos and it's possible because, you know, you. Yeah, and I am talking to you who's made it to the end of this video. Yeah, you tend to be the good guys. Yeah, the ones that appreciate what I'm doing and what I'm trying to do with this channel, yeah, and, and you know, you're the ones I really reach out for support. Now, whether that's via Patreon, you know, with a one dollar a month, you know, sort of pledge, yeah, or if you're not into that, the, the one off via PayPal, then, you know, down below in the description. It all does help. Now, if it, the best way to think about it, yeah, if you want to think about Patreon, think of it as like, a, you know, it's a dirt cheap subscription, yeah, for you to get the content you love, that you're already getting for free and helping everyone else get it for free as well. Which makes you a really good guy. Yeah, the PayPal is down below. Yeah, pretty much exactly the same. You're just not committed monthly. You know what I mean? So listen, if you would like more of this content, if you are interested in those other videos, they're going to take time to make because the stuff I'm doing, it's not going to be sellable or anything like that. So to make it, I need your support to make it, guys. So if you would like to see that stuff, if you would like more of this madness and Mel making his cock-ups and sharing them with you, yeah, then please consider jumping on board, guys. Yeah, you can either support me on Patreon or on PayPal down below, yeah. However you do it, it does keep this content coming and I genuinely can't do this without you guys. So, I'll reach out to you good folks, yeah. Please consider putting your hand in your pocket, pull out a dollar, you know, and let's keep all this going because I'm loving it and I hope you're loving it too. And in the meantime, guys, yeah, we start a fresh month next month. Yeah, trenches are coming. I'll see you soon, yeah? All the best.
Sarah.